Uh, hey guys, in the previous video there were many questions asked about how to integrate the Selenium and the Jira and Zappy and the previous video basically was at the very high level I was hoping that you guys would understand how I have integrated the stuff. I, that video was made in an assumption that you guys would know much about the Jira and uh, configuring Jenkins and Eclipse. In this video, the, the, the basically the questions passed were they couldn't uh, configure because of the invalid credential issues. Some of you have, have asked a question uh, to the Jira support team itself and they have provided the, the solution as well. In this video, what I'm going to do for, for you, I'm going to create everything from the start, especially the Jira, especially the uh, creating a new account in Jira and then configuring Jenkins and uh, running the test test cases in uh, uh, selenium and passing the result to the jira so everything i'm gonna do from the start especially <clears throat> i'm gonna go in depth about how to create a test case in jira and how to uh, what should be the title what in what way we have to write the title so that the jenkins would pick our uh, test cases so basically all these things i'm gonna cover in uh, uh, in this tutorial but i'm not going to go in depth about how to create a project in selenium and how to create uh, uh, how to configure uh, jenkins uh, just for running the eclipse test cases so my uh, uh, explanation in this video could be more about how to configure your project how to configure jenkins in a way that it would support uh, the test results using a zappy plugin so if you if you want you can move forward and backward uh, to to get to the point where we want so let me start with first uh, jira and then i'll go to the selenium part and then i'll switch to uh, jenkins let's take jira uh, yesterday i have uh, created uh, a new account and just wanted to explore what changes have have done uh, by the uh, jira itself uh, in this uh, in the zappy and sapphire connectivity i was exploring a little bit on that and i created a new account and i even ran my test test case one of my test case and it got reflected in the uh, in the in the test cycle itself so you can see the test got failed but that doesn't matter what we want is how the results are passing from the eclipse to the jira so it, it was failed and it works fine still and mainly the questions were about uh, how the test cases, uh, how the t t what is the pattern for writing the test summary, especially over here. So this is all I'm, I'm going to talk about today and how to create Jira and, and stuffs. Okay, let's create a new Jira account. Let me let me create a new Jira account. And when you work on Jira, especially when you start writing a test cases in in Jira, I would suggest you to use a and uh, internet explorer or the edge because sometimes what happens is if i use chrome the test steps that are meant for the test case may not be visible to some of the users so you you, you may not see the test step so i'll tell you what i'm uh, what i'm talking about right so let me go to a google let me let me get rid of all these things and uh, so we are going to create a new account for for Jira. So let's click on Glacier Software Jira, and here I wanna I wanna try it free. Yeah, I'm I'm basically creating a new account. Here you have three different op options. I'm going to stick with the option number one, which is Jira Software. I'm gonna click on Try It Free. Right, and you need to give your site name, first name, last name, email ID, and then you have to agree the uh, uh, agree the terms and conditions. Now I'm going to give something. Right, check test. So this is something I'm just giving it uh, my name appended with the. Uh, test keyword and it accepts that's fine and the username first name last me not last name I'm gonna leave it maybe I'll add some more because I used the same first name and last name yesterday so I'm gonna add one and two 
in the front and the back and now this email I have already used uh, for signing up yesterday so what I would do I will create a new email uh, for this so what normally I do is I use a York mail I create I create uh, many usernames and passwords uh, for testing purpose so you can create a new username and password for your email check the availability yeah so this email is uh, available so if you want to create a new username and password you can always use your email I hope you know that now this is the new email ID that I created just copy the email ID and go back to where we were yeah so here sign in with different application Running out sign up for account okay so let me do it again because I was locked in before try it again try this free try it free yeah now there, there is no fields filled right now so test is available and uh, name first name is test first name test last name and the email ID is the one I created just now which is testmail2 let me copy all the data that I use here so this is the email ID and which is going to be our username and password so many of you ask what is the username and password this is the email ID that you basically give it in the in the website so this is your username and password you can give anything like eight right I'm giving uh, yeah this is the password This is the password, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Gg at test. So this is what I gave. Let me caps. Go here. Paste it again. And that's okay. I'm not a robot. Yeah, traffic lights. Chinese no. so I agree and sign up now my account is creating so it takes few seconds to create so what have we done till here so we have uh, will come so while this is uh, creating I think it's done so it, it even sent an email to my inbox now I have to refresh yeah so I got an a mail from them asking me to verify my email address I click on verify email So take some time so what have we done till now we created uh, a username and password a new account basically and what we need is we need to configure Zappy 
we need to configure Sapphire and we need to write test case test case in a way that it accepts selenium commands and this Jenkins and selenium so we have to write in a pattern where the summary should have the package name class name and the method name so we have to write in that way so I'll show you how that happens now this is done I'm gonna skip I'm gonna skip all these things and uh, yeah click on Kanban and create your first project so let's say test project to create create now this will load for some time and you can see your official uh, Kanban board for your project so this is this is what we need now we need to create a test case and we need to create uh, <clears throat> and issues and stuff like that but first we need a test case we know that we have to click plus icon to create a test case now if I click on the drop down here you see that there is no task type or issue type called a test that's because we haven't configured Zephyr so what we have to do is we have to go to settings apps and here type Zephyr You see the first one Zephyr for Jira test management and you have to install this click on free trial click on accept and install so this would take some time to install after this we are going to install Zappy Zappy make sure that it updates the test results from Jenkins to Jira and Zephyr make sure that you you are able to write a test cases in Jira because Jira in itself is not meant for writing a test case we need Zephyr plugin now the plugin is installed successfully so before we go into this plugin we still have to configure Zappy let's install Zappy accept and install let's wait until this is done right now Zephyr for cloud this is done so what I need right now is okay I click on plus and issue type you see that issue type is still not uh, uh, a test here we are not able to find test that's because we need to configure the issue type in the test file so what I am going to do, go to go to Jira settings issues issue types <clears throat> and now you see we have test here what we have to do is add issue type uh, to standard issue type not to subtask issue type okay fine. No, no. I'm sorry guys not this is not where I should be yeah you see that this test task is not added to Kanban issue type scheme so we should add right now it is with default issue type scheme we have to bring TES Kanban issue type here so basically I can Click edit. No, that's not that's not how it works. Issue type schemes, I think. Yeah. Add issue type project two. Yeah. So here you have to bring available issue. Oh, sorry guys I'm, I take time to figure it out because I don't do this often I, I don't keep this in my memory I just have to click here and there to figure this out so I bring that 
bring the option from here to here and click on save so i was i was in issue types i i supposed to be at issue type schemes not issue type so now i got test from uh from default issue type scheme to kanban issue type scheme now if i go to issue types i can see that the test is added into both default issue type scheme and Kanban issue type scheme. So yeah, we are good here. Now I create I, I, what I did. I installed a Zephyr and I installed Zappy and I configured issue type in issue type schemes. So how we go to issue type scheme is using Jira settings. Just go to Jira settings and then Jira settings and then issues. So it it, it, it falls in jira software so now what we have to do is we have to create a test case now i can see the test click next okay so i don't i don't want i don't want to create test case in the five in the chrome browser because for me i don't get any test steps option in, in chrome driver so i'll take this website and I'm gonna use yeah. I'm gonna use let me get rid of my previous account and copy copy it and then this over here right Try different account and now let's see where till it loads that's why I think it's gonna ask me my password so let me copy the password and the username as well so now the next step is to create a test case and add the test case into a test cycle right as expected it is asking me my email so just copy the email and paste it here and then I'm copying the password again All right now this is our Jira uh, home page we can see I uh, have created a project test project 2 now as I was telling you we need to create a test case under the project test project 2 should type is test and I'm gonna call the summary so the summary is what matters it, uh, the summary makes the test case uh, pickable by the Jenkins so now I'm quickly moving back to my selenium window now in eclipse you see that the project pattern is designed in a way that it carries package name and then class name and within class name you have many test cases with a test application or it's usually a method right so you have to create in a way that it blends all the package name and test case name and then the uh, method name so what is the package name here the package name so this is one way that i found there might be other way of other way of calling the test cases which i'm not familiar about so this is this is the one way that i found that if you want to execute your test cases you have to keep your package name class name and method name in a way that it should be it should make sense to somebody who is reading it as a test summary right now it doesn't make sense because what is this this is this is definitely not a test case name but i should I should rename it in a way that once I club all this three, it should make sense to me that yes, this is a test case. Otherwise, it, there's no point in writing such a uh, such a vague uh, test summary. So this is for this is only for the demo purpose. So just uh, we'll ju we'll just accept what it is, whatever is available with me right now. Now this is the package name. I'm gonna just copy the package name. yeah so some of you asked question on this and just click on dot and my class name this 
dot and the method name right so this is test summary now give some random test uh, label and uh, just just create we don't want any of this now create I'm going to right I'm quickly comparing it with my yesterday's test case because I don't want to make any mistake yeah that's pretty much it is right let it load we need to see some of the tables here to add test steps and we need to pull this into our test cycle so right now let me let me quickly while it loads let me quickly give you the understanding of how we create uh, epic and stuff so basically if you're working in a big project all these things might have been done by somebody else this is uh, this is not mapped to a pro proper project and this is not having a proper status not assigned to anybody but in real time everything is very very properly maintained and uh, it would definitely make sense what it treat whatever it treats here so make sure you don't mess up with any of the titles and if you want to change the title just discuss with your team and your your project uh, uh, manager before you do such changes now let me quickly update the test step so this is what i was talking about this particular table i i couldn't see it in chrome browser maybe because some of my uh, ad blockers or ad blocker extensions that I have enabled are the reason for this issue it might work for you but I prefer to not fix those issues right now right I had a three test cases now this is even done so what else is pending we created we created as that we installed Zappy we installed Zephyr we wrote a test case and we need to create a test cycle right to create a test cycle I would suggest you to click on test so all the symbols over here you see this are this are coming from Zephyr if you are not having Zephyr there's no way that you're going to see this options in your Jira code right now we don't have any test cycle but we have one test case which i created just now now click on cycle summary in cycle summary i'm going to create a new test cycle and i'm going to pull the test case that i have created into that cycle so let's see yeah so this is a doc by default every one of you will have an ad hoc cycle but we are not going to use that we are going to stick with our own cycle name let's say test cycle test whatever save and now I, I don't remember the test case number that i have created but uh, what i will do is i'm going to let's try because um, no, I don't. I don't remember any of the ID, so I better go back here, or the test summary, and then. I hope I'm trying to make sense here. If I'm not, I, I truly apologize. I'm just trying my best here to make you understand what I did. You can even ask questions, and you can. answer the questions if you know the answer for the questions so this is the one test that we have which is uh, it's going to take me to the new test yeah this is the test case that i have right as i said this video might take a long i would suggest you to skip or just adjust the watching speed so that you can save some of your time now I get I have the option to add to the cycle what I'm doing right now I'm in the test case that I created you see the test steps 
where I get the option to add this test case into my test cycle. So add to test cycle. Right. Version. We don't have any version. This is our test cycle. We haven't created any folder in our test cycle. So let that be. And I'm not assigning this to anybody. Add. Now, let's add this. Yeah. Now this is adder in our test cycle. I can show you that by simply scrolling it down where we can see where we can see the test cycle. There you go. It was not there before. Now we have added this uh, test under this test cycle. So it's an executor. Now everything we have uh, done so far is about creating and uh, cycling and configuring Eclipse. So this part you have to take care the way you design your project and the package name and class name and your method name. This part obviously you have to take care. Now what we have to do is we need API keys and we need uh, API token only if our credentials are not supported in Jenkins, right? So we need we need these two things. But before we get this, I'll quickly configure Jenkins, right? So this part is Jira, and the second part. It's about uh, Jenkins configuration, right? Now, I have already configured Jenkins, and what I have to do is I have to configure this new Jira account into my Jenkins. That's the that's the part left. Let me run. Okay, I have a command here. I hope you guys know all these tips. Let's wait until the Jenkins is up and running. This is, I think this is gonna work. Meanwhile, I'm gonna take the URL to open my Jenkins. Right, we'll open our Jenkins in here. Yeah. Over here. Is it done? Let's give it some more time. Meanwhile, I can even show you how to get the API tokens back. Uh, Let's not deviate from this screen. Now Jenkins is fully up and running. Now we can quickly go here and that's my security code for so username is admin and this is a security code that you have to get it from your uh, Jenkins uh, folder from uh, in the C drive you can uh, which one well, so yeah here you need to get this from your C drive 
or you can set up your own username and password. I hope you guys know how to configure this Jenkins. I'm clicking on sign in. So everything is going good till here. So the main problem is yet to come, which is adding your username and password in the um, Jenkins credentials, uh, I mean the configuration. Now, you see this is the project and uh, the manage Jenkins option that I see on top is what we have to get into first. Click on manage Jenkins. Scroll down a little bit and click on configure system. I'm not sure if everything takes time today because of my internet. All right, scroll down a bit, scroll down a bit. Yep. Um, yes, over here. So you, if you guys remember, or you can even backward a video a little bit, and you can notice that the package that we purchased was Jira Cloud, not the Jira server or the data center. I haven't tried with Jira server and or data center. I just tried with the Jira Cloud. Now you have to click on Jira Cloud. If you have entered all the options previously you might see a screen like this otherwise all these options would be a blank one for you now this is my previous jira cloud url i'm gonna get rid of this i'm gonna add i'm going to add my new jira url which is nothing but this Yeah, so this is our new URL and Zephyr base URL is a constant one. You don't need to worry about this. Just type whatever is available uh, that you're seeing here. And then the username. As I said, the username is the email ID. So there is no separate username like your first name dot last name. No, it's not like that. And the password. Right. Here, the password works. It worked for me initially when I gave an ample amount of time for the Jira setup settings to be done and it worked for me but some of you have asked a question uh, to the support team why the credentials are not supporting and they have they, they have given you an option to get the API token and you can pass the token and that would work uh, very well but let's try with the password first if the password is not working technically it should support if it is not working we'll use the API token as well just in case but if you still want to use your password i would suggest when you once you create the account give some 12 hours or 7 hours gap i don't know that's not a solution but that worked for me now we need an access key and secret key to get the access key and secret key i'm going back to uh, jira jira software test scroll down to API keys so initially there won't be any keys you have to generate a new key but this UI changes often okay if you're seeing this video 10 months by by today after today then I would I would still say that the UI might be changed the this options might be changed so don't expect the same navigations each time you work on uh, this uh, Jira thing. So I'm just pasting the access key and then this is the session key. This is the session key. And then now we have to do test configure configuration. This is the this is the part where every one of you asked for a question and help that it did it was not working for you. Let's try. invalid user credentials obviously my password was not accepted so we are going to apply the second solution 
which is to get the API token. So to get the API token, you click on your profile and then your profile again. You have to navigate to your manage accounts, something like that. Yeah, click on the manage accounts. And then security and uh, yeah, API tokens. Create API token. Just give test your name. Copy to clipboard. Just copy. Go here and paste the password. Now let's try test configuration. Now our validator is successful. It means it accepted our Jira settings. Now what we have to do is let's get into the project. So I, I hope you guys understood what just happened, right? So this is this is the main problem that you were all commenting on that video. So I hope I hope this is clear now. Now let me get into the project. have to save and then click on your project now click on configure right I I believe that you guys know how to set a file system and give your project path this is basic Jenkins setups guys you should you should know this and uh, the other thing that you have to do is you have to use a published JUnit test result report you see if you're not able to access any of these options in this particular window I would suggest you to go ahead and add a plugin there is a there is a plugin i'll show you that's a possible action the in in settings you have to add a plugin i'll show you that as well for now let's stick with this which is published j unit test result report so you have to give a test result so basically once your test case runs it updates the test results in surefire reports in your project if you go here you can see in the path target over here and surefire reports you have to give this path it would take dot xml file which is test results and it would update the file into the jenkins uh, via zappy and it would update that in the jira so that's the that's the concept that is happening here so you have to give the path as target and your dot xml so that's the that's that's the, that's how it takes the result you just have to give start dot xml and this is test ng xml report pattern you have to give dot start double start forward slash test ng hyphen results dot xml and this is your jira url so let's for now this is this is my project name this is the url and this is my project name initially it will be like that first first let me save the settings and uh, go back go back again yep yeah. right now you see the project name my project name is okay where, where is my project name that's the thing yeah my project name is test project 2 which is what selected here 
and version we don't have and the cycle is test cycle let's let's confirm this again let that load for some time all right now this is taking a lot of time so this is a test cycle and uh, this this cycle is in the project so basically this is this whole setup is in the project called test project 2 which is what selected here test project 2 and cycle now click on yeah so you have to click on add post build action and you have to get this publish test result to Zafair for Jira and then publish JUnit test results. So post build actions. You have to click on add post build actions. You remember I said the plugin, so you have to use add post build actions and whatever you want, you just have to click on it. You will you will get the option here, right? And uh, yeah, click on save. All right, now let's run the build. Uh, I'm pretty sure that this build will will fail because I still have to do some fix in the code. But all we have to see here is uh, how the test results are updating in the Jira. So that's all matters now. So let it run. I'm pretty sure that it is running somewhere because there should be a Chrome window opening, which is not happening. But anyway, this would this would fail even if it runs. Let's wait until the build gets complete. Yeah, oh, there you go. It opens right now. So it, it took time. So it's it's just the Amazon login and logout. Uh, I, I don't want you to see it because it, in, it contains my username and password. So, um, so sorry, I'm gonna minimize this. Let that let that work in the background. while it runs let's revise what i have shown you so we saw how to get the api keys and we saw how to get the api token right so this is this is all pretty much we need uh, to configure this is part of Jira and Jenkins configuration and number three is uh, Selenium. You should have a right Selenium project. All right, now the build failed. Now what we want is the test case to be updated. The status has failed. Now let's go to our our project. So now this is an executor. Let's refresh. Hopefully, it should update the test results. Uh, it's still it's still taking time to load the page. Uh, now let's scroll down a little bit. Now, yep. So it does fail, and I also want to update a few more things here. The way I did right now would not update your test steps. It just updates the test case in a high level. You have to get into uh, 
the test step details and then you have to manually pass it if you still want to pass your test tips and what if you don't have a test case in a in a pattern that I mentioned like a package name and class name and the meta name then the Jenkins the Zappy key the Zappy plugin would create a new test case in Jira but that time you and you may not see the test test tips test steps will not be there so it's just going to be your test summary and then your status so this is this is pretty much it's all about integrating the uh, Zappy and Sapphire Jira Selenium and Jenkins so I hope I did my best to explain you how I did this again in this video. If you still have questions, I, I have seen that in a previous uh, question, in a previous video, people have people are helping each other with the comments. So that that helps, uh, that even helped me um, some way. So if you have any questions, you ask. If I get to see your comment, I can answer your question. If you, if somebody, if any one of you know the answer, you can even please use the comment section below to have a discussion on that so hopefully it works for you uh, and good luck with your setup and configuration